some time off, did some uh, major research on purchasing a vehicle, looked at several different brands, and I came up with this 2018 Honda Clarity. Now this 2018 Honda Clarity, I think is one of the most overlooked plug-in hybrids on the market today. And I'm gonna tell you why. Reason number one, I feel that the Honda Clarity is a very overlooked vehicle. If you go to the Honda website and you look under featured offers, you're gonna find a Cord Sedan, Civic Sedan, CRV, Odyssey, Civic Hatchback, Civic Coupe, Fit, HRV, Pilot, Civic SI Sedan, Ridgeline, and Civic SI Coupe. Did you see anything about the Honda Clarity? Not a word. Now, you go to their vehicles and down here is the Clarity Series. So let's click on the Clarity Series and see what pops up here. So here is the Honda Clarity. We have, if you're in California, $199 a month, 36 month lease with an 89 mile EPA. And I believe that's for California and Oregon. I happen to be in Florida. So it doesn't, uh, it's not available for me. So this plug-in hybrid, which starts at 33,400 with a 340 mile EPA combined rating, that one would be for me. This fuel cell, which is 379 a month for a lease, which is pretty cool if you live, this is only for California because it has, it runs on hydrogen. It has a hydrogen fuel cell. Now, when you go to this Clarity, if you um, ask anybody you know, just ask them, have you heard of the Honda Clarity? Well, my insurance agent had never heard of it. The finance lady, when I purchased the car, had never heard of it. And everybody that I talked to, nobody's ever heard of the Honda Clarity. So I think it's one of the most under misunderstood plug-in hybrids there is. So if you click on See All Models, let's see what pops up. Okay, here's the models. So they're talking about the 2019 Clarity, but I was just at the Honda dealership last week and they had never seen one. So I think these, these cars are limited production. They're very few and far in between and nobody's ever heard of them. So nobody's, unless you're in the know, you're not gonna go in and even ask to buy one. So I did my research online and I found a used one with uh, low mileage. And there were several around the country that were fleet, fleet returns, but I happened to find one from a, one owner. And my wife and I, we drove it and we were amazed at the, uh, the vehicle, how well it, it rides, how comfortable it is, how much room is in it. And now that I'm plugging it in and driving around and on full electricity, it, it meets my needs completely. Now, if I need to travel any further, I can, you know, get gas. But for, I'm getting, this morning I plugged in, I had a 55 mile range on the, on the screen. And the battery seems to work real well in warm weather, which I'm in Florida, so I have <laughs> extreme warm weather and it's working really well. So you can see here, it's rated at a 47, mile electric 340 combined and like i said i just i'm getting 55 this morning sometimes it's 53 sometimes it's 54 today it was 55. now i don't know if the previous owner had plugged it in and the, for sure the dealership didn't plug it in what i'm finding is when you go to these dealerships they don't even realize that you're looking for that plug-in so they don't even plug it in so when you get it the battery's almost dead now i think that um you know, it's not a good thing to keep these batteries low. And one thing, I'm happy that this vehicle was used and didn't sit on a lot for a year and a half because at least somebody was giving this battery some use. So there's several advantages for having a plug-in that runs on gas. There's an advantage and disadvantage to everything. Um, this vehicle is very big. It's got a lot of room. The, the, uh, I'm going to be getting into the performance of this vehicle and how well I like the power. It's 
It's a it's a well a well built vehicle. Now, see this um, layout here is it's a big four door, and it takes a lot of criticism for this rear wheel well that has the the, the chopped off top on it instead of being round and this bulge. Now it's designed for aerodynamics which is one reason. The other reason it's reported that they had to make room for the hydrogen fuel cells in the first first model of the Honda Clarity. So there's a reason it's kind of bulgy in the back. It comes with all the Honda sensing, everything standard. You get that whether you buy the base model or the Touring. And we wanted the Touring because we really like the leather seats, the leather interior, the uh, we definitely wanted adjustable electric seats, cranking up the seat manually every time we switch drivers between my wife and myself is not something we were looking forward to. And I even had, when I tried out the base Mustang, it had a manual seat too that you have to manually crank it up and crank it down. Now this vehicle comes with collision mitigation braking system. That's a sonar system road departure mitigation system, adaptive cruise control, and lane keeping assist. It also comes with low speed follow. So in bumper to bumper traffic, in low speeds, you can use a cruise control and it will apply the brakes for you accordingly and the throttle, and it'll bring the car down to a full stop if needed. It won't start after it stops. You will have to either step on the throttle or press resume on this on the cruise control. So, that's a few of the reasons I think this vehicle is misunderstood. Who's heard of it, for one thing? Who uh, has anything good to say about it? Only the few owners, because it's a very rare vehicle. Um, because it's misunderstood, the prices are really good on used vehicles. You know, even the new vehicles are good. You go to the dealer and they're willing to deal because people aren't out there looking for this car. This car is a gem. A gem in disguise. Now I'm really liking the instrument cluster and its uh, electronic layout and I see a lot of clusters, a lot of different styles. So on the left here you got your battery which I have charged completely up which according to the range is 55 miles today. Yesterday it was charged to 54. Kind of varies one one mile each way. One day it was 53. Infotainment center. You've got your home screen. Got your smartphone connection where you can hook up your Android Auto. My phone is in my pocket so it's not plugged up, plugged in. The Touring model has nav. So this vehicle is fully started now. It is ready to go. You see over here on the dash. Let me see if I can get that says ready it's in park so that's how quiet it is when it starts up I've got the AC on turn the fan down to one bar so that we can look this thing over you got uh, knobs for the AC which I really like you can put it on automatic you can have dual climate zones you've got your rear defroster your front defroster fan on and off well system on and off you got your recirculation and the outside air. Then you got um, hybrid vehicle, sport vehicle, economy vehicle, and you can hold this down and the electronic, the engine will charge the battery while you're driving, which is a nice feature. You got brake hold for like hill holder features. This is your selector system here. So like to go into drive, push that button, the door's all locked. That's a setting that's inside the cluster. Got your neutral, got your reverse, park, and this is your park brake. Now the park brake will go off automatically if you put it in drive and you step on the throttle a little bit. So you don't have to worry about that. So the interior, you got your dimming, automatic dimming mirror. You got your garage door openers up here, which I programmed to the garage door. You got your map lights. And you can turn your dome lights on and off to two different positions, either to come on with the doors. Got your illuminated vanity mirrors. 
You got grab handles in the driver's side and the passenger side. And here's your power window layout. You've got a lock so you can lock for the child windows, your power mirrors. You got driver one and driver two, which is uh, mapped off of the key fob. So when driver one walks up to the door, the door unlocks automatically when you put your hand in the handle. And then it sets a seat for driver one or driver two. Now you got your lane mitigation, you got your advanced braking, your uh, skid control, and your charge port door, which you can't really see there. I just noticed. Yeah, okay. Maybe this is better. So you got your charge port door and your collision and settings here. Over here on the door, you got your fuel door and your trunk release. You've also got ventilation that comes out of the dash and goes through the door and comes up here to defog your windows. So this, this trunk has a lot of room in it. Let me get a light on this. And let me see, can you see in there? Of course, with everything there is a uh, you know, there's no spare tire in here, so some of this room would be gone. There's a manual fuel release, got trunk release, came with a nice floor mat. So, I look inside, this is a Touring Edition. You may have seen it on others. It's got a simulated wood grain. It's got hard and soft touch on the door panels leather on the doors leather seats they look to be very nice the Turing edition comes with power seats the uh, base model doesn't it's got a two-tier center console you got a level down here for an iPad you could put an iPad or a, any sort of tablet you want you got two USBs, one for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and one for adding music. Then you have a center compartment here. You got a nice touch screen up here, which I saw a lot of the automotive reviews are complaining because it doesn't have a volume knob. Well, those of us that are used to cell phones and tablets, we're used to not having a volume knob. I don't see that as being a problem. I actually think it makes it sleeker. You've got steering controls for controlling the volume. Some people, they just, uh, it annoys them to have to tap the button. I don't find a problem with that. I actually like the tablet look. As you know, as you may know, Tesla has a, uh, tablet with no knobs on it and you know this this has a simplified Tesla style look to the dash except for Tesla doesn't have any vents I'm liking the vents on this dash and the the, the full design so right now I'm showing 55 miles of EV range it's only rated at 47 but I think because I live here in Florida the warm weather makes the battery more efficient I've got 246 miles of range there, and I probably only used a gallon and a half, two gallons of gas, maybe. It only holds seven. So at a half half here, it would be half of that would be half a seven, and that's only seven gallons. So you're not looking at very much gas there. So from the driver's seat, you have all these modes on the instrument cluster. You pull up the... Um, information bar and then you can scroll through mail phone music service compass fuel see i got 55.4 ev range 246 hv range with a total of 301 miles and if it was full of gas it would be more here's my um recent trips you can see i got over 90 miles to the gallon I got just under 90 miles to the gallon and I got over 60 miles to the gallon, which is pretty cool. But that includes electricity, guys, and electricity has its own 
Now the average fuel range I've been getting is 82.4, which is cool. This shows the power flow, and there's also the power flow on this one right here, which is a, a larger screen with a different style. So going back to the information, this isn't like an economy thing. The car, if you accelerate too hard, the car moves from the center line forward, and if you braking the car moves back just to give you a guide of what you are uh, how you're driving it's like a rating to help you get better mileage so all in all so over in the corner here we got um, I keep wanting to call it advanced cru cruise control but it's adaptive cruise control lane keeping assist and on lane keeping assist we got this this main button here to turn that on and off and then we have our lane keeping here which shows the lines up in the corner there when you hit that we got the distance you can set the distance for the adaptive cruise control and once you, you can cancel the cruise control slow the cruise control down one mile per hour at a time or increase the cruise control one mile an hour at a time now we got this little wood trim here in the middle of the steering wheel with the black shiny piano finish here with a nice leather steering wheel and uh, all in all guys I think to pick up a used one of these um, you know where the of course if you buy a new one you can get the 7500 mile I mean, seventy-five hundred dollar uh, tax rebate, if that w that helps you out. In my situation, I I guess you have to you have to make enough money to for that to even work out, and I don't. So anyway, so the hood releases right down there in the bottom, which is I don't think that'll even show up. And the slower console is really nice. You just set your stuff down there and then it's out of the way from up on top you don't have all your cables and stuff laying around here's your emergency flasher right there and we're gonna turn this off it also warns you when the uh, when you get out with the key in your pocket and the engine is running which is a good feature so the rear you got speakers in the doors, tweeters and woofers. You got that Alcantara suede, soft touch on the top, hard on the bottom with leather on the armrest. And look at the leg room. That, that seat is in the position for me driving. And I've got maybe six inches here between the knee and the chair. Got a lot, a lot of leg room right there. In the back, back seats are really nice. Now you got a fold down armrest with a cup holder here. You got a flip up headrest for a third passenger. You've got this back window. This back window is a pass through the trunk uh, I forgot to show you there's a window in the trunk so that you can see objects you also got a backup camera now the back oh, I need to dust this seat dust this area now the back window is sloped pretty hard it's gonna be hard to clean that back glass that is uh, something I'm not looking forward to well guys there's a quick look at what I've been up to I have done a ton of research researching you know, this was probably one of the hardest decisions I've had to make um, changing brands because I am, you know, loyal to the brand that I I know the product inside and out. This product I can't vouch for until we have it for a while. Um, I'm hoping that the Honda reliability is accurate. Uh, they, Honda has their issues. I went to the dealer. This vehicle's already had four recalls done on it, and it's less than a year old. Uh, of course, they were all electronic software updates, which is a good thing. At least they're updating. I guess they had some issues with lights coming on on the cluster and some things like that. 
I'm glad they were all taken care of. And I also got the Honda app, which is cool. You can turn your air conditioner on from a remote uh, vantage point. You know, like if you're at work and you want to turn the air on before you come outside, you can cool the car down. You can check your battery charge and you can check your fuel charge, which is really nice. You can do that remotely. And after all the rain lately, this car is going to need a wash. That's on my list for today. Guys, I want to appreciate you stopping by the channel. I'll have more on this EV. I did go look at Teslas, but they're out of my range. So, you know, I, this car was a, was a, I think it was a very good compromise purchase because this car is no compromise for as far as a plug-in hybrid. The Ford Fusion Energy, which I wanted several years ago since when they came out. The battery is takes up three quarters of the trunk. You couldn't even pick anybody up the airport with with any luggage. So as it, it was, the miles were you know, plug-in mileage was like 17 to 20. So I just talked to a representative who said they got 25 once, and they had to use every trick in the book. But this vehicle's got, as you could see, 55 mile range for me right now. And the battery is just almost a year old. It's got huge trunk, huge space inside. You're not squished. I know it um, kind of represents an old man's car, but it's a high-tech old man's car. Now, I am an old man, so I guess I'm moving on up. I was very happy with the Blue Mustang, if you follow my channel. The Blue Mustang was very nice. Um, they all have a purpose. I'm hoping that this one will feel the purpose of traveling, get good fuel economy and comfort. So there you have it, guys. Please hit like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.